So I've written my own library. I've always wanted to try it and I've done it. Well, I say I've done it. I've done it with the help of the lovely Arduino.cc website. They have a library tutorial and their one's um, Morse code. So they use uh, a Morse code class and they go through and talk about how you can create your own. And I decided to give it a go myself and create something. Now, I didn't want to do Morse code because it's right here. But I wanted to create something that I would find useful. Now, something I do all the time is using that delay without delay. You know, the, uh, the one we use milliseconds and that. So I thought, why not create one that does exactly that? And so here's my delay A library included. Um, and I've got these working and actually works on my thing down here on my horribly messy desk. Let's, oh, I won't bother moving all this stuff out of the way. Anyhow, we've got these working with um, a delay, but without a delay. And it's really, really fun to use. I love learning about stuff like this. So if I just, um, let's move that over here for now. And I'll just sort of explain how it's working. So I've got some instructions here, but we'll go into that when um, I look at the actual code, which I'm not going to be able to explain to you really, really well, but I think it might spur you on to do it yourself. It's not really that hard, it turns out. Um, I think doing some complex things like dealing with the internet and whatnot might actually be quite hard on the ESP8266, but um, simple Arduino type stuff is easy. So we're setting up our variables just like you do with any program here, but we've got some functions that we use. And so we create a function here, void, go, go. I'm not very imaginative with the name. So go, 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 go two and go, go, go three. Um, and then we initiate the class, create a class object. Um, this one's called blink LED and it's going to have a delay of 100 milliseconds. It's going to trigger the go, go, go function. And it's only going to do that once. So zero, not once. I mean, zero, <laughs> which does it infinitely. So it will keep going. So it, if I change that, let's change it to four times, upload that code. And I think that's the it built in LED is the one that flashes that one. Did it work? Let's reset. Oh, it does because it's at one, let's change that to 1000 and re-upload. So it should flash on and off. Three, one, two, three. No, okay, I missed some there. I wasn't paying attention. And then it stops. So in fact, to double check, let's just do it at 300. We should see four flashes. Three, two. Oh, on, off, on, off, on, off, of course, because we're doing the LED state, LED state is not state. So in order to get four, I would have to change that to eight to get the double amount because it's got to go LED state is not state. Um, that's how I've run that thing. So did it just do it? Maybe. Anyhow, so that's how it works. So you create your class object, you tell it what it's going to do and how long it's going to do it for. And then in your loop, you say, bloody go <laughs> and you tell it to bloody go. Um, there are some other things we can do with this. Um, so I've got restart other in here. This means that um, I was just trying to figure out how I can call other functions from another class object. I know it's totally weird. I don't really understand all the programming lingo, but um, bloody go is the thing that makes the thing bloody go. Okay, so let's have a look at the code and we'll move this. Oh, not move that. I wanted to move that. There we go. Just so you can see something still flashing on the screen. So in your library, you've got a CPP file and a, an H file. So we're looking at the CPP and in here, we've got essentially definitions for our class. Um, so we're defining types. So this is our class delay A. Um, and this is the thing I'm messing around with at the moment. I'm experimenting with. I'll sort of try and explain that in a bit, but we won't go into it just now. So the main delay A definition. So when you define your first delay, um, you have 
the delay in milliseconds, you've got which function you want to run, and we've got um, the run for command, like how long should it run for. So uh, run this shears now is it's like a, a, a type defined up here. It's a, a function type that we've defined. And then we also define what classes, not classes, what functions are also assigned to the delay A. So bloody go, stop, start, restart, restart, other. And that's the thing I'm playing with. So I'm not going to try and explain it because I don't understand if it works yet. It definitely works, but I want to try and... I What I wanted to do was put... Oh, well, it doesn't matter. We'll figure that out another time. Um, and it also has some private functions, private... Um, private variables. So we've got a public variable and we've got some private variables here too. Um, so that's the previous millis, the current millis, the fake delay and the started and now and the run for. Now, the, one of the reasons I made this library, and I know that you can get a timer library. I totally understand that. One of the reasons I did this, because I was always making previous millis two, previous millis three, like running it all down in my program. It was fairly silly at times. So I thought, why not do this? And I can just have this loop that runs through my bloody goes and does all this stuff. Anyway, this is the CPP file. Now, what this does, it gives it more detail to what this delay A thing is. So it's the basic setup. So we then say, well, when, what happens when we define uh, an object of the class? Well, we say delay A, fake delay run this shiz now and run for. So because we're getting in these variables from the function, we need to say, hey, your private variable fake delay is equal to the fake delay that you've got up here. And the same for now and run for. Now, bloody go is a function which you run in your loop. And all it does, it's like a monitor. It figures out whether it should still run the function that it's been defined up here, which is the now just here. So should it still run that? And what it's looking for is if it's not zero, then we're going to figure out how many times it's run for and if it's going to reach the limit. And if it has reached the limit, then we stop it. Now, if started, so it looks at the value for started. So if you look over here, we've got um, a Boolean started. Um, so if it's meant to be running, then it's going to check off the current millis and it's going to update it for that object. And then it's basically just the same thing as um, delay without delay or whatever that thing is, delay with millis. I can't remember what the function, the, uh, the basic example is. Anyhow, we've got a couple of other functions here. Start, which will say start true. Um, restart, which sort of minuses out the times run and set start to true. So if you look up here again, we've got times run equals equals run for. So it will minus that out and so that won't be true anymore. Um, and then we've got restart other. This is the, the thing that I'm playing with and I'm not quite sure about yet. So I won't try and explain it, but it essentially means that one object can restart another person's another object. So it can interact with another object's function. Don't really know what I'm doing there, so we won't go into that too much. Uh, and then we've got stop, um, which will change started. So you can start and stop them um, when without running out of uh, the times run. So you can stop it and then start it again later and it'll still only run for a certain number of times. So that is my little function that is uh, fairly rubbish for now. It's oops, that's the wrong window again. I wanted to get that. There we go. Um, so it's currently running this so we can we can mess around with that. Um, what should I do? Change that to every two seconds, that to every 100, but make it blink for 50 times. And then if this is only going to blink for eight and let's get rid of restart other because that restarts blink LED two, doesn't it? So if we get rid of that and do that, this is only going to blink eight times, this red one over here, and that's going to blink furiously for 50 times. And that one's off and this will do eight times. Oh God, every two seconds, it's going to be the whole time I'm talking. Well, while we're doing that, let's restart this 
and change that to zero. Hopefully that's stopped now, it has. So we took away the restart other. I can change that here. And if I say at, what will that be? Eight, 16 seconds, we're gonna restart blink LED2. Oh, don't we know? I don't even know. I don't even know if that's right. This is such a weird function for me. I'm not sure if I'm using it correctly or not. So we won't do that, but we can certainly restart blink LED2 with a different function called from restart blink2 there. So let's run that. And then we'll get to see this thing flashing once every 100 milliseconds, this one over here. This one's gonna do this two second. Oh, we should have, we should have made that smaller. Let's go 500. So it will blink four times, and then this one will restart it after 16 seconds. 16 seconds seems like a long time now, doesn't it? Anyway, I'll pop the code up so that you can play around with it. Maybe you can improve it in a really cool way. I don't know. Um, all I'm doing is playing around. So this isn't meant to be serious because there's timer libraries out there that you can find. There's, there's probably so many of them that it's unbelievable and they're all fully featured, no doubt. Um, but I just wanted to figure out how to do this myself. Going from, you know, writing code in, in here, in your little loops and setups and defining your variables and stuff like that's where I live and eat. You know, that's like where I've learned Arduino from or learn, learn basic programming really. Um, I mean, I can write you a web page or do some PHP or a little bit of Python, but this is all, this is just a lot, a lot more in depth than I care to go usually. So yeah, it's kind of exciting. So get yourself on over to, has it started again? I don't, I've not paid attention to the 16 seconds. If it did, you'll have noticed. I wasn't, I was looking at the screen. Uh, so get yourself over to um, arduino.cc forward slash en forward slash hacking forward slash library tutorial. Give it a go. Even if you just download the Morse code thing and change a few things and see how it works for you, then surely that can't be that bad. And it will be a lot of fun. If you can just create a library that takes the work out of some stuff for you, just like I've done with this delay A, I don't know if it really takes the work out of it. Those timer libraries that you can find are really good, but um, it's fun. It's fun to try new things and it helps get you motivated for other things. It started again. There it is. Anyway, check in the description. The library will be there. And I'll also put a link to um, the library tutorial page where I learned my first library. All right. Well, hopefully it was only a little video. I've no idea how long I've been recording for, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. All right. I'll speak to you all soon.